Welcome back to the wizard shop and no car ninja. You're not allowed to have this BMW. I'm taking this one. Let's get started. Finally, a BMW I will enjoy working on. This one's a 1983 BMW 633 CSI. No, not the TV show CSI. It's the, actually a car model CSI. This one has a 3.2 inline six, and it is in very good shape. It doesn't have a long list of things to fix. We're gonna take a look at this beautiful car today. We're going to be able to fix most everything on here, but we have one hang up that even the car ninja said there are no parts for. So without further ado, let's start at the nose of this thing. It's actually a shark nose. So here's the beautiful front end of this 633 and it has a pointed shark nose. Although sharks do not have nostrils, this has two snarling nostrils in the middle. It looks really, really cool. We can see this one is in really good shape. It's not museum quality like Euroasian Bob's Buick Riviera that we just saw, but it is very, very nice. It's a beautiful, what would you call that, sand color, Mrs. Wizard? Um, let's go with champagne. Champagne, yes, it's a celebratory car. 633 CSI. And we have a nice roundel. These roundels are usually gone or melted or gone or destroyed or whatever, broken. This one's in good shape. Let's open the boot. There's some extra supplies and we do have the power antenna out of here. Magic Mike has it removed. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But otherwise, very clean in here. Let's see what's behind door number one. Something you don't get in a new car. Look at that guys. A complete toolkit made by Heiko. You got pliers, slip joint pliers, wrenches, bulbs, screwdrivers. Very, very handy. These are the years of BMW I do like. They're very thoughtful. They want you to work on their cars. Here's proof right here. Please service and repair your own car. Go around to this side is equally nice as the other side. And we'll go ahead and open the hood. It opens like a jag bonnet. And there we have our 3.2 inline six. And it is fuel injected. It is not carbureted, even though it's 1983. Everything's pretty clean under here. It still has some of the rust preventative coating on all the metal parts. This right here, this lid to the relay box is usually missing and gone. It looks just like that, but this one's actually present, which is really nice. Here's our coolant reservoir, power steering reservoir, brake master cylinder down there. It does have an older accumulator style power brake system, similar to Hydro Boost on a General Motors. This is our airflow sensor. It's called a vane style. It actually has a flap that mechanically moves in there and tells the computer how much air is entering. It does have a distributor mounted to the front running off the cam. It has a six cylinder right there. One of the issues we have is a coolant leak and Magic Mike did pressure test the cooling system and found that the radiator itself is leaking. I went to my Whirlpack account and I said, this is an old car, I'm probably not going to find a radiator. But I was surprised. They had five of them, which is great. So I added that to the estimate and started getting numbers together. But this is a really clean engine bay. You can tell it's been serviced, it's been taken care of, it's been loved. So Car Richard, I see one thing missing from this engine bay. What's that? Lots of breaky, breaky plastic. Yes. L listen guys. Okay, Richard, give up, give up your, your percussion. Metal. Why can't we do this anymore? It makes the car last so much longer. This engine is still running decades later. Running's perfect. 
Oh, that's right. They don't want your car to last as long as this anymore. They don't want that. You should be buying new cars. Shame on you. Okay, here's our fan. That is achy, breaky plastic. Luckily, there's no cracks here in the webbing that holds the blades together. Everything looks nice and strong, so there's no action needed there. The thermal clutch is not wobbly, and everything looks good there. Let's go ahead and hop into the really sweet interior and let Mrs. Wizard show you guys around. Welcome, ladies and gents. And I think one of the reasons we're going to find that that exterior and that engine are looking so good is because it looked there. It has 60,000 miles on it. Hardly anything. And we know it's 60 because there's still that zero there. It hasn't rolled over, so it's not 160 or 260. That's it. Very simple, nice gauge cluster. I like how it goes from green to yellow to red, though. You can tell that the gas tank isn't quite uh, evenly distributed. Look how half is well over to that right. Not exactly in the half spot. It's kind of a different technique. As we move up, you'll see a dash mat. Uh-oh, there's probably some cracks under there. Not too shocking. I mean, if we're going to have brakey plastic, I'd rather be on the interior of a BMW than in the engine bay. It's a lot easier, a lot cheaper to get a dash mat and just cover it up. And that's what they've done. Obviously, we've got a few parts there that we'll let the wizard explain in a little bit. But as we move down, all the other plastic in here is looking really nice. They have upgraded the stereo to a Kenwood. Looks like there's a couple of knobs missing, but I think that's what's going to be up here. And he's going to explain that in just a second. As we scroll down, we can see that very simple to use controls, gear shifter, window controls as well. Got our parking brake. I would show you more of the passenger seat, but I have a passenger, it looks like, and he's covering up a little bit of it. But from what we can see, it is in good shape. The door card, also nice. Everything in here is a very dark, dark charcoal gray, but it is presenting well. As we move to the back seat, we can see nice leather seats back there as well. No cracking and no tears. We do have a deck mat back there as well. Do we you know, probably have some, maybe some tears, some rips, who knows, but it's covered up and what we don't see, we're not gonna worry about. Headliner on this guy is looking really good. No tears, no sags, nothing like that. So it's in really, really pristine condition. And here we have a really interesting header up here and it helps keep that headliner up as well. And if I feel below there, you can actually feel that it goes back behind as well. So it does help keep that protected as well. As we end up in our steering wheel, like we always do, lovely BMW symbol in here. Steering wheel is in great condition, just simple horn controls, nothing else going on. Made it simple, make it easy to use. After all, it is the 80s. So it's looking really good in here. Let's see what it looks like on the underneath. Here we are on the underneath, and we have had some coolant leaking out of the radiator, and it's been kind of spraying all over. That's kind of what all this greasiness going on here is from the radiator. Here we have a cast iron oil pan, no stamp steel, a big giant AC compressor meant to really keep you cool. Brakes are nice and thick, struts are dry, sway bar links are good, everything looks good there. Brakes are thick there. Sway bar links are good. Strut is dry. There is some oily mess here from the radiator still. Here's our transmission. And there you can see our torque converter. There's the oil pan for the transmission. Everything looks dry there. Flex disc. It's not cracked. It looks kind of aged, but it's not. Not all cracked into pieces. Exhaust looks good. Here's our rear differential. Boots look good. Brake pads, nice and thick. The strut in the back is dry. Little sway bar link is good. Thick brakes, dry strut. Sway bar link is good. This boot is good, and this one is good. It looks like they've got a new fuel pump and a new fuel filter at some point in the past. And here's our exhaust going out the back. Everything looks in place and looks good. Let's get this thing on the ground. So as you can see, this thing is very clean. 
on the top side and also underneath. It does have some oily residue coming from the radiator leak that was just spraying all over the bottom of the car. When you were in the interior, you saw Mrs. Wizard showing a couple pieces that are apart on the dash. That's actually the temperature selection dial, I guess you can call it, or knob. That is failing on this car and the customer provided a good used one. We're going to take that apart. It does show that it's a two hour job, but I'm charging three. And the reason why, is because back in the 80s, the techs could zip through this pretty fast. The car was fairly new. They could get their little power tools out and, zip, 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 and, and really rip through it. We will not be doing that because we're not going to destroy the dash on this car. We're going to slow it down, dial it way back, and use hand tools and take it apart slowly. The dash is where the brakey plastic is on this car. You get in a hurry and you start snapping stuff and then I might as well just do the job for free. So I charge an extra hour and the customer says, that's fine, please just go ahead and do it. So we have the radiator is leaking, we have the temperature control dial, the O2 sensor light will come on and off at times and when we use our multimeter to check out the readings from the O2 sensor, the sensor actually is failing. So the light was doing its job. So we got a new one of those on the estimate as well. So the last thing that we have to repair on this is the power antenna. And let's move over and show you guys what that looks like. So here we have the power antenna module out of the trunk. You saw that we had some of the carpet pulled away. Magic Mike has removed it. When you turn on the radio, it would do nothing. And we thought, well, maybe the motor seized up or something. And he did put power to the motor directly and it wouldn't move. But I said, why don't you pull the gear out and see if the motor will move. He did that and the motor runs perfectly. It's got really good power. Everything's in good shape. Even the antenna mast and the cable is all in good shape. It just won't raise or lower it because the gear is cracked in half. It's causing the worm to bind up. When it's turning, the split opens up and it gets bound. So it's a bad gear. I thought, well, they probably have those, so I went to my World Pack account, I tried several other places, they're not there. I thought, well, I'll send a picture of this to Car Ninja. He knows these cars, he's a BMW master. I mean, he's a wizard with BMWs. And he said, yeah, I should be able to get one of those, no problem, Car Wizard. And then about an hour later, he messaged me and he said, I was wrong. They're gone. He said, I have a place I used to get them. They're out. They're gone. And they said they're not getting any more back. I was like, okay, well, I can't find them and you can't find them. But there is one last resort, EuroAsian Bob. Because he used to do salvage yard business. He used to have all kinds of BMWs and Mercedes and Triumphs and Fiats and all kinds of cool old cars in his salvage yard. He still has them back there, a lot of them. He says he has two parts cars, he's going to let me know he may have this, which is going to be golden. He's going to be the last resort to get one of these. If not, we were going to have to just put an aftermarket antenna in there. Actually, Whirlpack sells aftermarket antennas because there's nothing you can do with these anymore. And that's sad. It's just a plastic gear. But I get it. If you sell two of them per year because these cars aren't really on the road anymore, it doesn't pay to even make them. So, hopefully he has a good gear. We can get this back together and have his antenna working again. If not, it's going to be up to the customer if they want to go to aftermarket or just leave it alone as is. This car is very beautiful. It doesn't have a long laundry list of things. It's just a, about five or six items and make it that much better. When I sent those pictures to Car Ninja with the antenna module, he said, hold up here, Car Wizard. Why don't you send me a picture of what you're working on? So I sent him some pictures of this 633, and then he responded. He said, hey, that's not fair. I should have that in my shop. I said, sorry, these ones are the ones that I enjoy working on. I'm not giving it to you. And he understood. He's like, I get it. That's cool. These are the era of BMW that I could pull apart in my sleep and put it back together. They are designed to be worked on. Fast forward to 2016, they are designed not to be worked on, only by the dealer. And 
even if I can do stuff here in the shop, it is so aggravating. I remember I had one not too long ago. It was the alternator bracket on a BMW V8. We know that they have a little O-ring that costs three dollars. It was leaking, I mean literally pouring oil onto the floor. It's a thousand dollar job for an O-ring because they run oil through the alternator bracket. What kind of thinking is that? Anyways, there's another crazy thing BMW is doing. Here's a picture here. It's been circulating around the internet. On the new 2023 BMWs, if you have heated seats in your car, you can pay a monthly subscription to be allowed to use them. If you don't want to pay it, or if you fail to pay your subscription, you, you forget to pay it one month, you'll go out on a cold morning, turn on your heated seats, and they will not work. They shut you off. A monthly or a yearly subscription so you can be allowed to use heated seats that you paid for with the car. Now you guys can see why I don't like BMWs. It's, that's crazy. We'll get this thing to the customer, get an estimate and see what they'd like to do. Very likely they'll do all of it because it really deserves it. It's that nice. If you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to work on this beautiful 633 CSI, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because a couple more vehicles came in today. You're definitely not going to want to miss. Thanks for watching.